I'm Freddie Effinger. I am 25. I'm a staff attorney with the law firm of Watley, Drake & Callis. And in 2007, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma without insurance. There is no warning for health illness. There is no warning for the monetary problems that it brings about. And all of us, whether we be young or old, are one sickness away from having to wonder whether or not we can keep our house. We're wondering whether or not bankruptcy is going to be in our future. And that needs to change. I was covered until I was 21 years old. Uh, and then I was just kind of skating through. And I was a 22, 23-year-old guy. And I'm in law school. I'm in college. The worst thing that's ever happened to me is that I had to get my wisdom teeth taken out. And that was painful. But it's not severe. And I think, as unfortunate as it is, there are scores of people who would fall into the category of being past the age that they'd be covered under their parents' plan, hoping to get to the age where they are covered under an employer's plan, or at least to get a job so that they can afford to buy their own insurance, and they're just hoping to get through. Now, you match this hope by the fact that everyone in their early 20s believes that they'll live forever and they're invincible, and you have a huge gap problem waiting to happen. I guess I did what any other person in my position would do. I started begging. I begged uh, the hospital and my oncologist uh, if there was anything we could do. I mean, maybe work out some kind of payment plan. I mean, we're, we're talking like multiple four or five hundred thousand dollars once I finished with everything, but I had to get healthy. Um, in the end, St. Vincent's East and uh, my oncologist. Shaley Lock and Paul, who was with Birmingham Hematology, they both agreed to treat me without charging me a dime, which was one of the most amazing blessings of my life. It's why I'm alive today. Um, but I shouldn't have had to beg for my life. I don't think anyone should have to ever beg for their life. Well, I, I guess what a lot of people don't know when they because I certainly didn't. When you go into the hospital, there's lots of different organizations working towards making you healthy and charging you all the while. So if I had to have a port which was installed in my chest because the chemo was particularly potent and it couldn't, uh, my veins couldn't handle it, well the port being installed had to be done by a surgeon and therefore you needed an anesthesiologist and numerous other people. And there had to be uh, EKG tests before that and respiration tests before that, and all of those separate things are separate bills. So each procedure that had to be done carried with it four or five other charges that I am recently trying to get a handle on. So even though I have my health back now that I want to go on and buy a house and live my life, I'm still having to chase down all of the different fees and expenses that I racked up just because I got sick. So it, it doesn't just end by one person being charitable. There's a long list of expenses that comes with becoming sick in America right now. Currently, I am insured. Um, and I'm also under a year-long uh, blackout period for pre-existing condition. And what that means is, uh, even though I have insurance now, the insurance company has the discretion to choose um, if any other expenses I create between now and December are related directly or tangentially to my cancer and my chemo. And if they believe that it is, whether it's, it is or not, they're not going to cover it. Going through uh, the cancer diagnosis without insurance and going through the process of chasing down all these expenses has done is it's added a sense of urgency to my initial passions. This needs to change, and I've always felt that, but now I believe it needs to change right now because the longer we wait, the more uh, anecdotal evidence we get 
of situations like mine, except they may not end as well. They may not be fortunate enough to get uh, insurance through an employer. Um, they may not be able to come to a resolution. The hospital may decide, no, it's a private entity that is uh, beholden only to their shareholders. They decided to help me, but they could have easily decided not to. My story is not so unique that it couldn't happen to absolutely everyone else in this entire country. Everyone's son or daughter could get the news that I did. 